All right, guys, welcome to Psych Explained. In this video, we're gonna talk about the neural pathway that controls a reflex, or more specifically, a reflex arc. And we're gonna start our journey with a scenario we've all experienced, which is touching something hot. In this case, a hot stove. Now, we're gonna number this so we can think about the sequential part of this process. And the stove is gonna be number one. And we're gonna label this the stimulus, okay? The stimulus. What do I mean by a stimulus? Well, a stimulus is anything that evokes a response. So light is a stimulus because it changes the size of my pupil, and the stove is a stimulus because it's gonna cause my hand to move away. Now, how does my hand actually move? Well, in your finger and all across your body are these specialized cells, right? They detect changes in the outside world. Do we know what these are called? We're gonna call these receptors, okay? So what are these specialized cells called? Receptors, okay? Your receptors in your skin that detect temperature like hot or cold or pain. Your receptors in your eyes that detect light. Your receptors in your ears that detect sound waves. So anything about bringing information from the outside world and making sense of it begins with receptors. Now this is where the magic happens, okay? Receptors is where transduction occurs. Transduction, okay? So what do we know about transduction, okay? We need to convert that message into something the brain understands. Do you know what that is? electrical signals. So that electrical signal will eventually travel up the nerve, but it begins with the receptors or what we call the process of transduction. So we have our stimulus, we have our receptors, right? Turning that signal into action potentials. And that signal is gonna travel up the body via what we call a sensory neuron. Okay, so here's our sensory neuron, up and up and up, okay? I'll even include some arrows so you know it's going this way, all right? So how's it heading to the central nervous system? What we call a sensory neuron. Now, interesting thing about these neurons um, and your nervous system in general is information only travels in one direction. I know Harry Styles fans, one direction, right? Information either goes up to the brain or information goes away from the brain. What do sensory neurons do? they go up, okay? So let's just have a little arrow so we know they go toward or to the central nervous system, okay? So they're gonna go up. Now, once they reach the destination, which in this case, the spinal cord, here we go, and here's our arrow so you know it's going up, they're going to enter, okay, what is called a spinal nerve, a spinal nerve, okay? So let's take a moment, okay, and understand all the stuff we're looking at right here, okay? What we're looking at is a cross-section of the spinal cord, right? Here's your spinal cord right here. And if we kind of take a section of it, that's what we are looking at, right? Something to also notice, by the way, you also have, you can see all the nerves popping out, is we have two different colors, right? We have what's called white matter, okay? We have white matter that is the outside of our spinal cord. And then we also have something called gray matter white matter and gray matter. And you can see the gray matter on the inside. So what's the difference? Well, to understand the difference, we have to look at a neuron, okay? Now this neuron has its typical things, the dendrite, the soma, the axon. But some neurons are very special. Some neurons have this fatty white substance that surrounds the axon, okay? This fatty white substance, do we know what that's called? That's called the myelin, okay? The myelin sheath, okay? The myelin sheath. Right? And this substance is the color white, which gives it this kind of white matter. This is a myelinated neuron, which means it makes things go really, really fast, right? If I touch something really hot, I want my nervous system to pick it up quickly. While gray matter does not have myelin, it is unmyelinated axons, okay? Now, I forgot to label this, but number three, right, is going to be our sensory neuron, right, traveling up our spinal cord. Now, this is where it splits off, okay? This part of the spinal cord, we are gonna call the dorsal root. The dorsal root, okay? Dorsal just is Latin for behind. So this is kind of behind the spinal cord, okay? The sensory neuron's going to enter. It's gonna go up and up and up and up and up through the dorsal root and enter where our gray matter, okay? And I'll put a little line here so we can see this is gonna eventually go through, right here, eventually go through this gray matter, okay? Now, we've entered the central nervous system, right, the spinal cord. This is where we have to make the decision. Either the information is gonna go towards the brain because maybe we just wanna process it, or if we sense danger, we might need a quicker decision, right? And who's gonna make that decision? What we're gonna call a interneuron, 
Okay, so here's our interneuron that's within the gray matter. That's going to make a decision that, you know what? This is really dangerous. We're not going to go straight to the, to the brain just yet. So what do we have? We have our, our interneuron. Interneuron, right? This is the connector, right? The link connector and the decision maker, okay? And the interneuron is saying, you know what? We don't have time to go to the brain. We got to make a quicker decision. And the interneuron is going to connect to another neuron. What do we call this one? The motor neuron, okay? So now we are at the motor neuron, okay? So a couple things about this. Number one, let's write this in together. We are at the motor neuron. Okay, and just like our sensory neuron, remember everything goes in one direction, instead of towards the brain afferent, we are exiting, going away from the brain. Okay, that's our motor neuron, okay? And also we'll make sure we number this. We have three, this would be number four, right, our interneuron. Um, and then number five, we have our motor neuron, okay? And the motor neuron is gonna travel away, back down, instead of our dorsal root, this is gonna be our ventral root, okay, our ventral root. Okay, ventral just means up front. So we have behind and we have up front, right? And it's gonna to travel towards the muscle. We're gonna to travel, 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 and we bind to the receptors on this muscle. Let's do our arrow so we know which direction this is going, okay? Now, at this point, we're gonna call this muscle an effector. Okay, this is the final destination. So what do we call it? Number six, step six, the effector. An effector is anything that receives a signal and produces a response. So your glands could be uh, effectors because they produce hormones, or an effector can be a, a, a muscle can be an effector because it contracts. And what's gonna happen? Our hand's gonna move. We're gonna move away from the hot stove to protect ourselves. And here's the cool part. Your brain does not even know what happened until after your hand moved, right? Because we didn't have enough time to go to the brain just yet. So here's our six steps, let's repeat it again. We start with a stimulus, in this case a hot stove. It's detected by receptors where transduction occurs, right, we turn information to electrical signals. That's gonna travel down our sensory neuron, right, that goes up towards the brain. It's gonna enter our spinal cord, right, our spinal nerve, through the dorsal root. And our central nervous system, where our gray matter has to make a decision. Because it seems dangerous, we are going to connect via the inner neuron to the motor neuron to go back out the ventral root and contract our muscle to move away. Once again, our brain doesn't even know until after this happened. And by the way, why we call it the reflex arc? Reflex is for involuntary because we don't consciously move our hand. And arc because that's kind of the shape that this actually makes. These are the stages of the reflex arc. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you learned something. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe, leave a comment below. I'll see you next time.